Welcome to the UK Collector of Stuff YouTube thingy, where we collect stuff in the UK. I'll be your host bot for today as the collector has a crappy microphone. I'm going to review the PlayStation 2 game Deadly Strike. Let me start the footage and we can get started. When I first played this game I thought it was pretty crap. You can't jump. You can't grab. You can't throw. And blocking is really slow. It's quite repetitive, and gets boring quickly. However, after playing for a while, it's grown on me. The game isn't great, but it's not bad either. Graphically speaking, the best thing about this game, has to be the main menu. Even though it looks cool, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Maybe it's a time warp thingy, that, would explain why Rockstar is fighting with a broadsword in a shogun's castle. If the rest of the game, looked as good as the main menu, things might have been different. As far as the gameplay goes, all you do, is hack and slash, until you get to the boss. You beat him, and then hack and slash, until you get to the next boss. Think, double dragon, but less cooler. The only redeeming quality to the gameplay, is that you get to use a gun. That's right. Everybody has a different gun, with different strengths and weaknesses. So while your enemy is laying on the floor, you can school him on bringing a knife to a gunfight. What else is there to talk about? Oh yeah, you only have 6 characters. 2 all-rounders. 2 that are fast but not strong. And 2 that are strong but not fast. After you beat a boss, you can choose which path you want to take to get to the next boss. Each path is a different difficulty with different scenery. The scenery is a pretty nice looking. Think, King of Fighters, but with way less movement. Beat the game once, and you unlock a few things. The gallery, which gives you a bit more information on the characters. It also shows you how crappy the characters look compared to what they were supposed to look like. You also unlock boss battles. This lets you fight only bosses. Not sure what purpose this would serve, but it's there anyway. Another thing that's unlocked is extra. This allows you to play the game as enemy characters. It would have been a nice touch, if they weren't so garbage. There's only two things left to talk about. The first is the sound test, which is there, when you start the game. It lets you hear almost all the music in the game. It leaves out the music for the FMV as well as the fighting sounds. You would think they would be there considering this is supposed to be the sound test. Anyway. Lastly, there's a shop, which is also available, when you start the game. In the shop, you can buy power-ups and extra costumes as well as other things. Keep in mind, that not all power-ups are good as some make the game harder. The currency is points. These points are best accumulated, when you do combos. Combos are basically the amount of people, killed within a certain period of time. For example, you must kill each person within 10 seconds of each other, or you lose your combo. The best place for combos are in the survival mode where you fight a non-stop barrage of enemies. In story mode, your combo will always end, when you fight the boss, because it takes much longer than 10 seconds to kill him. I give this game a 1 out of 5. There are very few things good about the game, and it could have been much better. Some things just weren't thought out properly, like the incomplete sound test, and why the main character's sword differs from static art to playing in-game. In the end, this is one of those games, that has some good ideas, but fails when it comes to delivering them properly. Well, that's it for my game review. Hope it wasn't, too crappy. Hopefully, the collector will have a working microphone next time, so he doesn't have to hire me. I don't come cheap you know. 
Until next time, TTFN.